Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm at London Liverpool Street today and we're going to Peterborough. Not the usual station you're to come to to get a direct train to Peterborough, but today there is a direct train to Peterborough. We're going to go down to the platform and find it. I just wandered down this end of the station just to have a look because you never know what you're going to find. And this isn't where I'm expecting to find our train, but a bit of a surprise. It's a Class 37 sat there, 37608. So that's quite exciting to see, but our train is just over there, so let's go and find it. So here we are, we're on the platforms, and here is our train, Class 47, 47815 Great Western, with a rake of Mark II carriages. So this is really exciting to yeah, be able to ride a proper train on the line out of Liverpool streets. I've never done local hauled, I've done local hauled out of here when there were local hauled trains from Norwich. Never done diesel local hauled train out of here. But to do local hauled train up through Tottenham Hale, Harlow Town, etc., I've not done before. So as you can see, it's a train of Mark II carriages. I remember Mark II's on this line when they were hauled by a Class 86. So it's kind of bringing back some nice memories. There's another 47 down the other end. You may just be able to see. I'm going to wander down there and have a look. So that'll be hauling me there. And then later on, come back behind 815. I've, that I've definitely travelled behind before. Not sure what's on the front. So we'll go and see. How am I going to go and find a winning loco? Noisy down here, but we have 47813 on the front, so not a winning loco, but it's going to be nice to have a good diesel bath on a line which you wouldn't normally get noisy, proper traction like this on. So I'm going to go and find my seat and enjoy the ride. Well, here we are on the train, much posher than the usual train. This is actually a first class carriage, so I thought I'd sit up here. A lot of the diesel bashers are right in the front to get the thrash, but I thought I'd come back here where it's a little bit quieter and um, I can have you know, well, there'll be other people sat there, so I expect. But it's, it's very pleasant. I mean, I do quite like the Stadler built units, they're probably about the nicest, in my opinion, new trains you've got. But this is really nice. It's, it's run by West Coast Railways, they put a leaflet on the table. Quite often travel on their Jacobite and their other charter trains. Now, I was talking about Loco Hall. If you have a look, I can't see everywhere. This is my map of where I've been. Everywhere is my track house. And basically, the yellow lines are what I've done on a unit. A green highlight is what I've done on a Loco Hall train, so I can highlight all the way up here in green. And then um, the orange which yeah, the orange is, is steam but obviously not doing any steam today so it's gonna be a great trip I'm gonna sit back and enjoy the ride up to Peterborough So following my arrival at Peterborough Station I've had a rather brisk walk round to the other side of the river and the railway lines and we've come to the Rail World Wildlife Haven. Now there's a viewing platform so we're going to go in there and the bomber ticket we're going to go in and we'll see the Class 47s go past from there. So the bridges you see that go to British that's the East Coast Main Line, this much lower bridge, that's the line that goes over to Ely which I've travelled on. So I'm just going to head up there and that's where the uh, viewing platform is now. Interesting. Um, I'll look around after so you can't miss the first thing you did here. I've seen it a lot from the East Coast Main Line. This is a hover train. This was part of an experimental hover train which ran in Cambridgeshire. So let's go and see the 47s and then we'll have a proper look around the side.
So after seeing the 47s depart, I rushed over here to Peterborough Neen Valley Station to see this pacer arrive on the Neen Valley Railway. That'll be going again in the next 20 minutes or so. So what I'll probably do is I'll hang around here, I'll watch that go, and then we'll have another look around the railway site because that was the whole reason we came here. I'd love to do the Neen Valley Railway. I could do a round trip today, but I feel if I was to do that, I wouldn't have time to get off at each station and have a really good look. And of course, there's couple of miniature railways up the line there's one in Ferry Meadows and there's also now one at Wandsford so the Neen Valley Railway is a video for another day just making a bit of a cameo um, appearance day anyway this is the hover train so this was an experimental hover train which ran in Cambridgeshire there's not much you can see left of it but it was a thing in the 70s that different countries were experimenting if you want to know about the French ones have a look on the Tim Traveller great youtuber he's made some interesting videos about the French hover trains but this is the carriage, or one of the carriages from the British Hover Train, of a more familiar high speed train, just hiding underneath it. There's an HST, it's a one carriage HST, and you may just be able to see there's also a Danish steam locomotive, which uh, we don't get the best view of here. The Neen Valley Railway was known for having lots of foreign locos, and I think it, they have got a Danish steam loco, so I'd love to come and have a ride behind that so we're definitely definitely going to come back and do Neen Valley Railway at some point possibly by the time you're watching this video I may well have already been back so, um, so there's not really a lot else to see in this area I'm gonna have to go back into the site and we'll have a look around there so I'll have to go back to the ticket office get my ticket out show them I've already been in we'll have a look around the site now I've just seen a few interesting train movements, Class 47's paces. It's all gone a bit quieter now. You can have a look around the site. So here's the, the hover train. It's uh, quite interesting. I was just reading a board about it. It would have travelled at about 300 miles an hour. And as I said, it had a test track over in Cambridgeshire. If it had been rolled out over the country, it would have probably gone from London to Edinburgh in about an hour and a half. So obviously much, much faster than today's trains. Next to it is a model railway. And I think if we press this button should all start up you should see a train in a moment now so yeah i can see various trains over there something should come out of these oh look there's james there james the red engine and there's a I just saw a glimpse of thomas right over there so we'll wait and see what also is a lgb two double headed lgb tank engines so it looks like there's four circuits here and then there's another line going up and down there's another train just coming around the corner, another non-Thomas one. I think most of the trains are Thomas. So there's six trains, yes, yeah, so you've got Thomas, James, Percy and Toby, from what I can see. And then there's the LGB tank engine, and there's this train here. So that's quite exciting. I'll film more of the model railway later on, and I'll put all that into another video. We're going to go and look around the site. Well, there's a couple of things on this side. So this is the site of the old steamship here. There's, there's Percy, the end of his line. He goes over quite a nice uh, pond. So, the sun's a bit in the wrong place, so I can't show you that well, but there's an HST over there. You can see that in preservation. Right at the back is a maglev carriage. I'll put a picture in now. So that would have worked at Birmingham Airport between Birmingham International Station and the airport. I've been on its replacement quite a few times. The other one is at the National Rail Museum, hidden away. So we're going to go over the river now. It's quite an unusual museum. This in that it has a bridge in the middle of the museum over the river. So it's effectively two halves. So where we were then, that was the site of the steamshed. So the steamshed would have been there. That was the Midlands steamshed. LNER ran the or ran the line north, and the Midland had a line coming across. We're going up here now. So it's quite an unusual railway museum. So that side has most of the rolling stock. 
as it is literally next to the Neen Valley Railway, it has a connection with the Neen Valley Railway. The other side of the river is more of a wildlife haven, hence the name of the place. So just looking down there, I can just see, there, is, there goes Thomas reversing with Annie and Clarabel, and there's that HST over there. We're crossing the Neen now. So it's, it's funny really, because you go over two public footpaths that kind of go under the site. So it's like a gentleman walking along River Neen there, he's not in the site, they're just public footpaths. That's the bridge on the line that goes to Ely, so I passed over that bridge on the Class 47s and I will go, it'll be dark by the time I get home, but I'll go back over them this evening when I go home. I can just see over there, so if the camera's picking it out, the spires of the cathedral. Peterborough is a cathedral city. There used to be a power station just over there, that's where Asda is. Peterborough does have a modern gas power station, there used to be a coal power station, and this used to be the yard, all this area here, that's the wildlife haven. This was the yard for the, um, for the, for the coal yard, for the power station. So we're now across the river, and it says wildlife haven. So it's gonna, the video tone is gonna change quite a lot here. I did rush through here earlier to get to the viewing point, see the class 47, but now, I'm not rushing anywhere, I'm just going to walk around and enjoy these rather different sort of gardens. They're, sort of, they're gardens with a woodland railway theme, so we've got this old bridge here which we're walking over. Looks like we can go and walk under, we we'll have to do that. There's a, a signal box there, so let's go over the bridge and we'll go and have a look in that signal box because no one else there. It's one of the things of making videos is you can go to these places and you're going to have other visitors, which is, is great, but when there's no one there, I've sort of got to see some opportunity. Interesting. Whether that's out the power station, I'm not too sure. Let's have a look in this signal box, and then we'll go down there under the bridge. I did think about seeing the train here as well, uh, the 47s, but in the end I didn't. So we go up here. And again, it's a... Okay, so there's, like, there's no levers, but you can do two things here. You can watch birds and insects on one side, you can watch trains on the other. At least the birds and insects don't run to a time table. There's also some rail cam cameras there, and this tells you it's not much in the way of movement, but this will tell us if there's a train coming on. I can't see there's anything, so we won't wait for a train. There's a Thameslink Class 700 parked there in the sidings. There's the railway stations up there, so again, this line in the foreground is the line which goes, let's go outside, I can show it to you better. This line is the line to Ely, it's not electrified. The East Coast Main Line over there is. The bridge I was showing you over the Neen is literally just there. That's the signal box behind us. Looks really good for a replica signal box. We're down under the bridge now. Let's just follow this path and we'll see where it takes us. It feels very nice and peaceful and, you know, away from everything else. Now we get to a junction here. And the path going off down there, there's also some steps up here. And I'm one of these people when I go to places, I tend to walk down every bit of the path. Oh, this is nice. There's a pond here, and another, like a smaller version of the bridge we just crossed. So you've got a pond here, makes it very nice and calming listening to the water. And it flows off down there in a stream to another bridge. So if we go down there, and then there's like a lookout tower or mound. So I don't know which one to go down. They all look so exciting. That stream they've created runs off and down there. Let's just have a look around. Let's go up here. Usually when I go to a sort of viewpoint, it's when I finish the video, but this one's kind of come on us. How do I get to it? Okay, um, so the path is over there. This is, it's like a maze, this place. We're on another bridge. So, yeah, it's a bit of a, a maze, this place. Quite unexpected. There's some more railway over there. I wonder if we can get to that. Now, perhaps we can't go down there. I didn't say we can't. Let's go back around there. In that building, that's the exhibition centre. There is a cafe over there, and there's also some model railways, which I had a, a poke when I was in just after seeing the 47s depart. So, like I said, I'll put that on to another video. I might show the odd clip. I'll have a look. This reminds me a bit, completely different, but Puzzlewood in 
Gloucestershire, it's like a woodland where there's all these paths that take you down different places. It's a bit of a maze. Oh yeah, that's that bridge that went over the street. If I'd just come straight around there, we'd have made our way up the mound. So we're now going up the mound this time. And this is what we get at the top. We get a view of the site. You can see the stream we were looking at flows off down there. The River Neen is just behind the trees over there. So now I'm up here. I should be able to have a look at what else there is. I think if we make our way down and under that bridge, we can go and explore over there. And then we've seen that part of the site. So it's, it's exciting here because you've got the railway aspect of it, which I like. And I do like going for walks in the countryside and just exploring. So it's sort of got, you know, both. We've got gardens, we've got water. I've got basically everything I like here. I'm going under this bridge now. As mind your head, it is quite a low bridge, not the lowest bridge I've ever been under. If you want to see what that is, have a look. Link, link on screen now, somewhere very different to here. Where should we go now? They look so sort of exciting and inviting. These paths, what's this? Neen bicycle, Neen Holt bicycle platform. What's this? Then, is this is that a bit of railway line? I can see. Oh, yeah, wow, look, there's one of those rail bikes. And I uh, wonder if it works. It says don't touch it, so I'm not going to touch it. But oh, yeah, it's a halt. So if I let's just, I think we can go onto the platform. So technically, I'm now taking off another railway station. Um, I don't think I'm going to get the bike for haulage. I don't know if it works or not. I say it says don't touch, so I won't. I did have a go on one in Serbia once. A bit of narrow gauge track over there. Um, yeah, so this is Neen Holt, an unexpected shack. For those of you who don't know, shack is. A term that enthusiasts refer to for a railway station probably because that is a little bit like a posh shack it's sort of done and painted and everything but you get some on the main network that aren't so nice as that so if, if you ever hear enthusiasts talking about a shack they're talking about a railway station let's go up here now this will take us down to the other end of the site there's a little model church there's kind of a model i'll go down there too it's like someone stuck building uh, an OO scale model village outside. So let's go have a look at that. I'm quite enjoying my afternoon here. It's been completely different. I start the day off diesel bashing. I end up walking around a wildlife haven, which has little surprises. So do we call this a model village or more of a sort of a, a scene? Yeah, look, little model village. So that's quite nice to see. They could have a model railway and a miniature railway. They got, I don't know if that land belongs to them, they had a miniature railway, this place would be, yeah, amazing. We, we've been down there. No, let's go down there again. We have been down here, but we haven't been down the other path. Yeah, if they had a model, a miniature railway, that would be great. That's the path that took us down to that bridge. Go through these beach, this little beach avenue. Um, actually, where's this going to take us to? Right, uh, here's... An, we're having to retrace our steps here. We've been to here before. So if we go back over that bridge and then we'll walk off down that path and just see what's at the end. I sort of feel like I could um, just go off and do this all off camera, but I don't know what I'm gonna find. So I quite like sort of discovering it on camera for the first time. So we'll have a walk down there now and see what there is. This seems to be like the path at the back of the site that not everyone necessarily goes down straight away. And it's more peaceful. So it feels now, it's starting to feel like I've got the place to myself. There are other visitors around, but it's, it's sort of spread out. Um, so that's why it feels like I'm just wandering around here on my own. Let's go around this windy path. Another place I have to say it reminds me a little bit of is... Um, is at Mount Sorrel, a branch off the Great Central Railway. That's got a wildlife and railway kind of outdoor museum. It's a, it does remind me of that place a bit. So that's the end of that stream. You can see the awful. So it's very pleasant. I think I'm gonna come to the end of what there is to see. Although that said, wouldn't be surprised if we find something else. Have a look at some old, yeah, see what I mean? About finding something else, some 
railway vans. There's a bit of a lookout up there. We'll go up there in a moment. Is there anything to see in here? Might not be now, they are locked up, okay. Um, some beehives over there. They're, they're active, I can see a lot of bees. Let's go up here to another viewpoint and then I think I'm gonna go and get a cup of tea because uh, there's a little cafe over there. And I've done a lot of walking around in the last hour or more running around, I think. Wow, this is a yeah, nice viewpoint. Looking out across the River Neen and you've got an HST and a hover train in the background. A moment ago, we were over there. I've come back over the River Neen. I've left the site now. What I'm going to do, I thought, I haven't got time to do the whole Neen Valley Railway today. And like I said, I want to do it on a day where I can do the whole line. But because I've got still quite a long time, well, four hours till my Class 47s take me back to London, I thought I'd go for a walk. I thought I'd go for a walk along by the Neen seemed the logical thing to do. And then thinking about it, I thought, well, if I was to walk along by the Neen, Valley Railway, so you've got River Neen there, the Neen Valley Railway here, there's Peterborough Neen Valley Station. If I walk to Alton Mere, the next station, I can have a ride on that pacer back to here and I can tick that off for haulage and I'd have done a bit of new track today and then at some point I'll come here again in the future and have a proper ride on the whole length of the Neen Valley Railway. So I've walked for about half an hour, probably just over a mile along so this part of the River Neen, there's a canoeing course here on this weir. I think it's something I would particularly want to do. You can see some boats up there. The station, Orton Mere, is just over here. So you can see that road bridge. That road actually goes right over the top of the station. So probably in the next sort of 10, 20 minutes or so, my train will arrive to take me back to Peterborough. So it's been quite a long walk. Obviously it's a flat walk, so I've been following the river. See, here's the railway. So I, I came across there, went over there to make that the video. The train's coming from that way, so that's looking towards Wandsfoot. Get a nice view of the station here. Lattice post signal and signal box. There's a junction as well, because you've got the line. So one way goes to Peterborough Neen Valley. If you were to take the other line, that goes to the connection with the East Coast Main Line. There's also a signal box. So it's like, it's a Midland style box and it's got a modern frame. Admittedly, I don't know too much the history because this wasn't the plan. It's just spare time I've got so I thought I'd do this little bit of Neen Valley Railway. I will come here and do a proper video of Neen Valley Railway and I'll do the history and which stations open when. I have a feeling this might be a completely modern creation. That's certainly a modern station building there. So yeah, apologies for no history on Neen Valley Railway. It's coming in another video. So this is a bit different for a heritage line station having a a modern road bridge running over it but at least from the station itself you're sort of by the river so if you were to come on the train if you get off here and go for walks further up is Ferry Meadows where's the Mitch Railway again that's a video for another day I'm gonna wait for my train now to take me back to Peterborough Neen Valley I've had a great time here in Peterborough today. I'm now standing on the bridge over the River Neen. I'm going to follow the path back to the city centre. You can just see the cathedral over there. It's the East Coast Main Line behind me. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're in Peterborough, do have a ride on the Neen Valley Railway and visit Railroad. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And from a nice sunny evening in Peterborough, goodbye.